Now on BBC One, Inside Out with Keely Donovan. Good evening. This week, the young people trying to stop knife crime in their community. And we meet the woman who's using social media to help others battling eating disorders. Hello, I'm Keely Donovan and this week we're in Leeds. Coming up on the programme, a year since the death of teenager Irfan Wahid. The young people still living in fear of knife crime. Do you still carry a knife now? No, not really. Not really? Also tonight, the young woman battling an eating disorder but trying to inspire others to be healthy. Being in hospital wasn't good enough. The only thing that would have been good enough is if my heart stopped. And that's the only thing that would have satisfied my anorexia. And later in the programme, like a duck to water, looking back at one of the most notorious sports finals of all time. It was certainly the wettest Wembley in history. In some areas, living with the threat of knife crime has become an everyday reality and one that gets vastly underreported. Well, next week marks a year since 16-year-old Irfan Wahid was stabbed and killed in Hare Hills, Leeds. Our reporter, Tracy G, has been speaking to people, including members of Irfan's family, who are determined to change things for the better. Some people feel like they can't be safe in Hare Hills. Around the streets, there's loads of crime in it and you need to protect yourself. You can't really trust anyone really now, can you? I've reported on many murder cases, knife crime incidents and stabbings, but I get to go home afterwards. And you are saddened by the loss of life. But imagine if that is your home, that's your reality, it's your family. Hare Hills East Leeds is home for the boys at this youth club. Boys who used to be out on the street, some with a blade in their pocket. Screwdrivers, little table knives, anything that was sharp, to be honest. Anything that could protect me from anyone else. And why, why did you carry it? Because it made me feel safe, that's what it was. It made me feel like a bigger person. But when I think about it now, it was stupid. Everything changed on the 10th of February last year when their friend Irfan Wahid was stabbed and killed. The 17-year-old attacker said he carried a knife for his own protection. He's now serving time for manslaughter. When it's someone that you know, it, it gets to you, so you understand what could happen and the consequences. They set up this youth club in the wake of Irfan Wahid's death. One of the leaders had a personal reason for doing this. Irfan was his cousin. The person you grew up with, who you shared your most, most of your life with, it's pretty, um, it's pretty shocking. It's upset, it upsets me every day. Till this day, I, I still think Hair Hills could be safer. I have brushed kids off the street and brought them into here. I don't want one of their families or one of their friends to pass away. I wouldn't let my worst enemy feel the same pain. I felt I wouldn't want to ship on anyone. Yeah, we've got over 60 young people now attending. They brought most of the boys into the youth club by walking the streets and talking to them. The lads come up to us because we are part of this community as well. They're not shy to talk to us. Some of the young people they come across are growing up in a culture where everyday objects like these are being used as weapons. Two of the boys who go to this club spent time in youth offenders institutions for possessing a blade. No one could fight with their fists in it. It's always knives, yes. hammers and all sorts around hair hills, isn't it? You say no one has a fight anymore without a weapon? No one, bled. And what sort of things are we talking? Like knives and hammers in it and screwdrivers, nothing more. At one point, you know what I did, basically? I was in the classroom and you know the sharpness? Like there's this blade part. Mm. I used to take that out, just keep it in my pocket. So when you say in the classroom, you mean you were at school? Yeah. Do you still carry a knife now? No, not really. Not really? No. So obviously, if it's summer, if I feel that I'm going to be dangered that day, I'll carry summer on me. But I'm not scared to chuck one in the throat or something like that. 
doesn't it exacerbate the problem if you pull a knife on somebody? Yeah, it does, but obviously you have to stay protected. I don't want to die in a young age. Knife crime has been a reality in Hare Hills for a long time. Four years before Irfan Wahid's death at just 16, Kieran Butterworth was stabbed just a couple of streets away. He was 17. When he got took away in the ambulance, a taxi had been driving past and I've stopped the taxi. Me, my mate and my partner jumped in the taxi. When we've actually arrived at the A&E, the ambulance doors were open and the bed that they transported him off of was still outside, covered in blood. It's like I just knew, my legs just went from underneath me. Every day it's stuck in my mind, isn't it? Obviously I remember him and the stuff we used to do, and, but that day is stuck forever. Guilty of murder, over a £170 drug death. I mean, when you see that... It gets me angry. It weren't even £170. He only owed the man £100. My son's dead because he owed a man £100 for cannabis. Sarah is Kieran's mum. Like a bomb just exploded. And then there was just this big void with nothingness. Sarah's loss sent her on a mission to stop other young people carrying knives. We've got a picture here. Yeah. Uh, I mean, to explain this to me. What, what is this? This is what I do. I go into schools and I spill my art and I try to make a difference to re educate these children that that it's not good to carry a knife, that you're not safe for carrying a knife. I've been doing it for, for ever, ever since he died and I don't feel like I'm reaching a big enough audience. So she started a university degree. I'm doing teaching. Next year I'm doing counselling so that I can offer support and set up uh, loss and bereavement groups and hopefully keep the attention to knife crime awareness in the community because it's getting worse. Knife crime is on the rise. Last year, West Yorkshire Police made 481 arrests for possession of a bladed weapon. That's more than one a day and a third more than the year before. Sarah thinks the police could be doing more. I'm hearing every day in Errols alone that this has happened, that's happened, somebody's been stabbed. Deal with it, put strategies in place to change things. As you can see, that, that's a machete. If someone's carrying a knife amnesty is just one of West Yorkshire Police's responses. We are working really hard to educate young people right across the force that carrying a knife is not the answer. You've dealt with grieving families. We've spoken to some of those grieving families and have said to us the police force aren't doing enough. What would you like to say to that? It would disappoint me, you know, that, that a, a grieving family that we have supported as much as we possibly can through very, very tragic and upsetting circumstances uh, don't feel that we're doing enough. We do recognise that we have had an increase in knife crime, but we are committed as a force to dealing with that and addressing it, bringing people to justice and getting knives off the streets of West Yorkshire. Back in Hare Hills, the street team are bringing boys on side. With this youth club running and all of these guys, I do feel safe in my area because they do help out, they're out there, they're in the streets and they're helping people. Without the youth club, we'd probably be local drug dealers and no one would care. But here, everyone like, shows respect and they care about you. These lads, they come together as a community. We give them more choices to have, like as in, you could be doing so much more than with your life, you could be getting a job. We try to inspire them to do better things in life. They might also be saving lives. 39 children and teenagers were killed in knife attacks in the UK last year. I've seen the statistics and it's risen so high in the, in the last few years. It's, it's ridiculous. I don't understand why people do it. It's the young ones, the ones that you wouldn't expect. It, it's heartbreaking. And if you've got a story you'd like to tell us about, you can contact us on Facebook or Twitter. Coming up on Inside Out. Splashing fun. We remember the rugby league game that descended into farce.